Hello, welcome everyone. I would like to present our next speaker. It's Andre Suri from ISC, who will be talking about bind nine code quality. I don't think this is actually a DNS talk, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> right, good luck. Uh, a little bit. So, um, just, just to get a feeling of the room, who, who knows bind? Who, who, who uses bind? <laughs> okay, who is a developer here? Oh, so many. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, would, I would know something about it. And who, who, who ever programmed something about DNS, like DNS developers? Okay. okay. So um, this talk is more about like what we are doing to bind at the moment. So it's not strictly about the DNS. It's more about the bind, and uh, and about the concurrent programming. Um, so so my my question would be, who does threaded programming? Okay, quite a lot of hints. Um, so um, there, there's a couple of prerequisites uh, for us um, in, in Bind. Uh, and that's continuous in integration, because if you don't use the tools I'm going to show you uh, on a regular basis, it, it doesn't make sense at all. So, so if you ever use the tools, just integrate them into your continuous integration. And then you have to have the time to fix all the bugs. So, uh, about Bind, it's a 20 years plus old code base. So you can imagine, um, it's, it's pre C99 code sometimes, and it, it's getting better. It's multi-threaded, uh, it uses locking, it has its own RW lock, which uh, have some advantages, like it allows downgrade and upgrade. And, and since Bind 9.14, uh, which is current stable, uh, we are right now, just before the release in 9.16 stable version, it uses the STD Atomics or, or the shims for in GCC or, or in Windows uh, API. So, um, uh, I don't know if you can actually see that, but there, there are a couple of tools that, that we can use or, or we are already using, and it's kind of built from uh, Clang. I'm going to talk about a CPP check. Uh, there's also Clank Tidy, which does a different kind of checks. Uh, we are not using that yet. Uh, for the runtime analysis, there's, there's a lot of uh, sanitizers from, from GCC and, and LLVM, uh, which are very good. Um, and there are some commercial tools like the Covertis, Covertis Scan, uh, which can be actually used for free for the open source projects. Um, there's something called Sonar Cloud, I think, uh, um, but that's that's like very chatty. It, it reports all kind of weird stuff that's not even like it has a lot of false positives for us. And there's lookgoodtome.com, uh, which also looks very good. Um, and and the last tool we use at the, for Barn is Cosinel. Uh, it's uh, very good tool for refactoring large code bases. It's it's mainly being used for Linux kernel, but we are using that too. So so what's what's the scan build? It's static code analyzer. Um, it works by replacing the CC and CXX uh, environment variable, and it comes from the LLVM and Clank suite. So the usage is quite simple. This is for the auto config based projects. You, you you need to use it for configure, and then when you are running make, you keep the CC variable set. From the configure step, and and the output is this is this is just one of the commits because we tried to be uh, more verbose than uh, just fixed back in the commit messages. So this includes uh, uh, um, the the real reports from the uh, from the scan build, uh, and it it finds that like little stuff. The, the the bind code base is quite good in regard regarding the scan build. Uh, so it, it found like small stuff like the result is never used and uh, and so we fi fixed that obviously. Um, then the CPP check um, that that's a different tool. Uh, it's an independent project, also static code analyzer. It's more difficult to use uh, if you if you use AutoConf because it requires compilation database, which is a JSON file with like which includes. All the configuration options and uh, and C flags and LD flags and 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 the path to files, and uh, 
And you need to build a compilation database. So there are some tools that, that can build that automatically, like I think CMake and others for automake, it's, it's more complicated. Um, and it has a different level of strictness. The, the most strict level is, is um, crazy at the moment for bind. Uh, I'm not saying it, it reports false, false positive, it returns good stuff, but uh, we are not there yet. So uh, this, is, this is the usage. So you run configure, then uh, you for, for May, auto make and auto make, you store a tool called bear, which is, I think, sh like shortcut for built ear. So it listens what, what goes on. And then you run CPP check on the compile commands JSON, that's the compilation database. And it runs the scan on all your source files. So it, it's important to run your project in like a debug mode or, or enable, you enable everything in the configure so it gets analyzed. Um, and the output looks like this. So it's, uh, uh, this is the output from the tool called cppcheck-html report. And uh, you are lucky because the CPP check 1.90 just came out and it found a new errors <laughs> because we were uh, CPP check clean before. So this is, this is from the CPP check 9.90. Uh, um, so it, it found a new, new errors. Uh, and uh, then if you click the individual error, it looks like, uh, looks like this. So it, uh, it's annotated source, your source code. Um, and it shows the path through the file, and it's, it's very, it's very good. Uh, so if you're, if you are developers and not using the CPP check, I, I invite you to do so uh, because we like it uh, quite a lot. Um, so um, the next tool, the Cosinel, um, it's a program matching and, and transformation engine, and it has something like called semantic patches. Um, the usage is that you call the command as patch, then you uh, pass it a patch, the, the semantic patch. It can work on, on Git repositories, and uh, there are some other small options. So this is, and it outputs the number of files it matches according to the rules, and then if there's anything needs, that needs to be patched, then it either outputs the patch to the standard output, or you can like patch the files uh, in place, there's an option for that too. Um, this is a very simple semantic patch. So what this semantic patch does, that if it finds an assertion, uh, for example, if you have a switch, uh, switch command and there's a default which always asserts, like this is like custom um, bind assert, it insists zero, so it, if, if the code reaches the point, it, it crashes uh, with assertion. So, um, so it adds uh, ISC unreachable, which is actually just macro to um, to attribute that, that the, the end couldn't be reached. So it adds the ISC unreachable to all occurrences of the insist where it's not already there. So that's the condition behind. I'm sorry for the Unicode character. It's actually. Uh, 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 the, the normal uh, asterisk dash, but the font kept like changing that. Um, and, uh, and this is a more complicated example. Uh, we made a, recently we made a change to the uh, bind allocator. So ISC memget cannot return null. It, if, it, if the allocation fails, the bind will crash because if you don't have enough memory, then you have different kind of problems anyway uh, uh, with, the, with the current allocators in, in, in modern operating systems. So this, this tries to catch all the, all the occurrences where um, uh, there's a statement, uh, which is you, you declare a statement S and then expression V. So if V, like a variable, uh, is a null and then falls the statement, uh, it just deletes the whole whole block of the uh, with the variable, and there are some. Uh, it's it's quite smart. It it even uh, can understand. So if uh, if v is not now and there's a block and uh, there's an else statement, you can just keep the uh, keep the other block, which is uh, the condition on the the first con first block on the on the right with the s1 s2. 
So it can do all kinds of transformations. So it understands the C code and it transforms the code properly. So it's not like a um, like find and replace. It, it it understands the C code and can delete the whole statements or, or transform them into something else. Uh, again, if you are working with the old code, code base like Bindis and you need to do, do extensive refactoring, this is very very cool uh, tool and uh, and you should try it. So um, there are some more examples how to how to do stuff with Cosinel. There's a, a web page. Uh, there's uh, we, we have a directory with all the semantic patches we, we used in Bind, but they are very Bind specific. And there's uh, Cosinelary.org, which has even more examples in a in a Git repository. Um, so so why? And and here comes the fun part. Oh, well. Uh, it's not so funny if you have to fix all the bugs. Uh, so who understands the memory ordering? <laughs> oh, I'm lucky. I can tell you whatever I want. <laughs> On a platform with weak memory or consistency. <laughs> okay. Uh, me neither. Uh, well, I'm, I'm trying. Um, so and what about memory barriers? Like, do you know what's that? Okay, one, <laughs> two. <laughs> so, uh, and, and bonus question, what's lock elision? Would anybody know? Okay, I'm not going to talk about lock elision, but it's a, uh, a feature on Intel processors, maybe on AMD too, where you can like not lock things, but when they uh, collide, you roll back the whole transactions in a, on a CPU and memory and you actually do the locking, so you can avoid some locking on the hardware. Uh, very cool, but I'm sure there are some bugs hidden in there, especially with Intel. Um, so, uh, thread sanitizer. Uh, this is runtime analyzer, so it's, it doesn't analyze the static code, but it analyzes the like, running code. It requires TUS, it requires, requires a good test suite to run. Um, or you can like run it on your production if you are uh, brave enough, um, and it checks for data races, um, like if multiple threads access the same memory location, uh, mutex ordering. So if you have like multiple locks in place and they are locked in different order in, from different threads, so they, they, <coughs> there's a possibility of deadlock, and other subtle errors in the in the thread programming. Um, the, the usage is is again quite simple. You just add a flag to to C flags or LE flags. Well, you need both. And and for bind, we need to. I, I told you we are using our own implementation of, of RW lock. Uh, so thread sanitizer doesn't understand that. So we need to use the uh, the standard P thread uh, RW lock here. Then you you build the program. Uh, then you export some extra options. Um, we, because bind is quite complex, we need to increase the history size. It's like the amount of memory the thread centers are used to, to keep track of the memory locations. Uh, and some other options which uh, make it more uh, like cleaner because, for example, the lock path, the lock path TSEN, uh, basically means that the, the output is locked in the separate file and it's not mixed in the in the uh, standard standard output, uh, exit code again means like usually it exists with exit code 66. But if you are running a test suite, you usually don't want to stop the test suite because the uh, it failed. So um, there are some like options like this. Then then you run a test suite. Um, Bind has both unit test and system test, and then there's an output like this. So uh, as you can see, there are uh, data rays between the two threads, uh, and they are similar location, like ISC, NM handle, unref, um, but there's a data race, and it's quite interesting data race, because this is the, this is the unref function, uh, it uses reference counting, and if the reference goes to zero, uh, 
which is the, the function ISURF count increment. So if, it go, if, if it's not zero yet, then it returns. But if it's zero, then it deallocates resources. It should be correct, right? So why is there a data race, especially in this function? So it probably uses the reference counting. And then the, like the free function, which is called here, it just deallocates the resource, and that's it. Uh, it clears the resource, and then it's, the memput is basically the ISC version of, of free. And uh, still, there's a data race. It, it looks like innocent, innocuous, right? Um, so the fix is to add a destroy to the, to the reference handle. Why? Because the RefCon API uses the standard atomics, and the decrement function uses the memory ordering release, and the destroy function uses the order acquire. And to actually understand this, this is the, from the documentation. So if you don't use that, there's no synchronization between the threads. So the destroy function, the missing destroy function made the, one of the threads not to synchronize with the other during the decrement. And then there was a data race because of the missing release uh, load. And um, like, <laughs> okay, so who now thinks <laughs> understands memory ordering? <laughs> Uh, I understand memory ordering and the atomics more than I understood them a year ago, but I'm still like, <laughs> um, another example, uh, there's a data race on the PowerPC 64, uh, reported by Red Hat because they, they do have some interesting hardware. Uh, and it's, it's caused by our own RW lock. And the proposed patch, again, changes the uh, memory ordering from relaxed, which doesn't cause any synchronization, to acquire. Uh, and, and the compare exchange operation, again, to acquire. On a synthetic ben benchmark, it works. I just, I just look at the function, and I think that, basically, uh, there's an error in our RW implementation, but we haven't seen it because the usual hardware has a strong memory consistency and it doesn't manifest. So it, it manifests only on the PowerPC64 because it has a weak memory consistency. Again, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, I think that there's a, there's a lesson to be learned here. So to my... Um, I like the saying, don't do your own crypto and I would add, don't do your own locking, unless you absolutely know what you are doing. Uh, and, uh, and, and the good news is that in a new version by 9.16, uh, we are actually have running a benchmark now with the system library RW lock, and with some other tweaks, we are over one million requests per second. So just dropping our own RW implementation increases the performance because we changed the other parts uh, of bind. So that's good news. We, we, might, be lock, we might be dropping the implementation at all. Um, another example. Um, there's a comment. No one else has this socket, so we can free it, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and the fix is actually to lock the, the socket, structure, so socket structure because, um, again, there was a bug which no one else has the socket except when you are on FreeBSD in a VMware on a hardware with a lot of cores. It was very hard to reproduce. Uh, and, uh, but it was reported by the FreeBSD maintainer. Uh, uh, and thank you for uh, for all the work he does uh, by reporting the bugs to us. Uh, but it was it was very weird bug. We, we tested like uh, with a lot of cores on Linux, but it only manifests in the free on FreeBSD in VM VMware. Like, 
if if anybody can uh, say me why, then I would be happy to listen. Uh, so another another thing uh, uh, on FreeBSD, we added to to our continuous integration. We added FreeBSD and Windows in September last year. We also added OpenBSD because if you don't run it in, in the CI uh, on every merge request, then it it's like it's not happening because the developers are going to ignore the reports that came asynchronously. And, and there was an intermittent failure in the FreeBSD system test job, and it was a crash in the libfred system library. And it was an OpenSSL at exit concurrency because OpenSSL 1.1 automatically destroys the resources. But if you have a multiple threads running and and shutting down the resources, then one of the threads were destroying the mutex is held by the OpenSSL before the OpenSSL on exit functions ran. So we had to request that, like, there's an internal task manager uh, in bind. So in a fatal function, you have to request the exclusivity of a task manager so it finishes all the other stuff before it crashes. Again, like <laughs> uh, uh, it was very weird because we were like looking why it's crashing in the in the system library. Um, um, here's the here's a quote from the documentation. Um, the other type of debugs is the lock order inversion, and this is actually the the cycle at the beginning is quite short. I have some like eight. Uh, Eight mutex long uh, bugs uh, in bind at the moment. They are not yet fixed, and but it looks like like, like mixing the mutexes in a different order from different threads. Um, just an example how it, how it looks. Um, the most simple thing you can do is to convert the, the locking to because there's there's a lot of flags in structures. So we just converted this, this flag, removed to, to standard atomics, dropped the locking at all, and it's protected by the atomics. Um, and now you have to get the memory ordering right. <laughs> so are we there yet with the thread sanitizer? Not yet. So this is the current result on the, on the bind master. Um, there's like 10 distincts warnings from the from the thread sanitizer but uh, there's something like more than 200 different paths to to the warning there's a lot of um, duplicates like these six uh, errors are probably the same one and in the in the log ordering there's probably also uh, a lot of duplicates so it's not that that much bugs um, but we are not there yet it doesn't crash on a regular basis. It just sometimes something happens, and we don't know why. Uh, and uh, and getting getting this clean means that we can run the thread synthesizer in a strict mode. So if there's a new warning, it will stop the merge request from being merged. And uh, but as I said, we are not there yet. Um, so uh, thank you for listening. And if we have seven minutes for questions. If you have any questions, not about memory ordering, please. <laughs> I have several. <laughs> uh, just a, a very quick one. Um, did you um, also? Uh, enable more compiler warnings over time. Um, in yeah, we, to the we, check. we yeah we run with uh, uh, W all W extra all the time, and we also have a in the CI we have multiple jobs. So we run with Clang, we run with GCC, and we run with different op optimization options because sometimes it also if you run with minus O zero. Sometimes it reports stuff that's not real bug, but it like I don't know. There there was a there was a um, code that 
if there was a variable zero, it didn't run a loop. So on a higher level of optimization, it got optimized out. But on a lower level of optimization, it, it printed a warning about something. So, so again, like trying different optimization options from minus 0 to minus 03 is also a good option in, in, the, in the CI because the compilers do a different stuff. Also, running the thread sanitizer with Clang and GCC uh, bears a different results. So that, that's also a thing you, you should do if you're running <laughs> the sanitizers. Uh, just, just do the different uh, compilers because they, they, you know, they create a little bit different code. I see a question. You just talk loud. I don't know. I don't know what is our code coverage at the moment. Uh, Can you go back like thirty slides. <laughs> Okay. 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 Question here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I would like to ask you about C++ check. Uh, you use this tool to try to find uh, bugs or exceptions in your code. Is it possible to use it to, for checking coding style? Uh, well, Bind is written in plain C, so... Uh, but I, d I don't know if it's a C++ check. Or CPP check. CPP check. check. Okay. Yeah. You mean this I one? I mean this one, yes. This Is one. it possible to check uh, just coding style? Um, some, yes. It, it, um, for, on, on, some optim on, on some strictness level, it also reports like uh, variable scoping. So when you can reduce the, the scope of the variable uh, and, and some others. It, it's, it's quite extensive list, actually. So... Uh, but it would be moose to just so show it here. But this this is what we use. So we uh, this this is from our CI the, the line. So we are just using these. But um, I have a I'm in the Emacs camp. So uh, and I do my coding in Emacs. So I use flycheck to run CPP check and and Clang. Um, on my code, so it auto automatically like highlights the the issues. I'm I'm probably sure that the the, the stuff that the young people use, like <laughs> all the IDE, so that it, it does this as well. But the Emacs, uh, I like Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> so what's Bear Make? Bear Make it's um, uh, it creates the the compilation database from right. Make. Okay. Any other questions? So are you finding that CI is very expensive or slows down your team? Because um, I found that those, those are the options. So right now, um, we are using uh, uh, like hosted bare metal servers and we have like eight of them to run all the CI, but we have something like 50, 56 jobs at the moment. So it and it it's getting slower and slower as we add more and more tests. We also have a Windows in the CI, so it's it just consumed one one of the machines. But the other machines are shared. So if we are um, OpenBSD is ran in the uh, QMU, uh, FreeBSD had also consumed its own machine, and it uses jails. Uh, we we wrote a plugin for GitLab CI to use jails in the in the GitLab CI. Um, and also the, the, the OpenBSD, that's also our own plugin. Um, for Linux, it, it uses the standard Docker. Uh, but for, for the other systems, we had to write uh, custom executors for the GitLab CI. Um, so define expensive. So um, if it catches a bug, that would cause a CVE later. Was that, was that expensive? No, no, no. <laughs> but I, yeah. I found in, in some teams that it, um, it can scare people off. Like you say, we're going to spend a thousand dollars a month now on just testing the code all the time. Yep. And they say, "Well, can't we do a hundred? And well, yes, then the team can do one feature a week. Yeah, we are we are so spending something under under thousand dollars per month 
for hundred thousand? No, thousand. Under thousand. Okay. Thousand. <laughs> one one thousand. One thousand. Under uh, one thousand a month. Under okay. under one thousand a month. That seems yeah. like a good deal. Yeah. All right. Thank you.